wearing his usual that morning, black coat sweeping the floor, ethnic scarf tied casually around his neck, flash of yellow at the ankle, he was wearing his Donald Duck socks. Nothing out of the ordinary. But instead of sprawling in his chair, legs fully extended for the unwary to fall over, he was jumping about like a stalk on hot sand. Welcome, fellow Thespians, welcome. Now, if everyone is here, I have a very exciting announcement to make. We, the middle world amateur dramatic society, are going to do Othello. Desdemona. I have always wanted to play that part. <sighs> there was some negativity. Why can't we do Midsummer Night's Dream? Again, Middle Wallet loves the dream. Are you sure about Miss Aubrey? We don't have any black players. It's Gerald. He was bound to play Othello. I still get a little flushed when I remember his Heathcliff. Aubrey said, a mere detail, dear. You must leave everything to moi. Then he said he had further news. Marsha Davis was going to help with the auditions. Marsha Davis, the actress. Oh, oh, perfectly darling of her to agree. Have I mentioned we were in separate tables together? He had at every opportunity. Anyway, he handed out scripts, told us the auditions were going to be the following week, and we were just about to leave when he put up his hand. Just one more thing before you go. I wonder if we might discuss a few of the difficulties regarding the village hall. Now, I thought it might have something to do with the haddock. Told you, didn't I? Mrs Jenkins always leaves her shopping too close to the radiator. Drafts, for one thing. Such a tiresome thing, drafts. And poor dear Marsha does feel the cold so acutely. And the seating, so hard on the nether regions, don't you find? She won't notice all the padding she's got. I grinned at Gerald. He was smiling at Sylvia Munro. They were bound to cast Sylvia as Desdemona. A cleavage always guarantees her a lead role. Anyway, Aubrey said, And speaking of seating reminds me. I hear the ladies are a danger to life and limb. Dangerous ladies? I like the sound of that. <laughs> oh. Sylvia giggled, of course. I'm speaking of the seating of the ladies' convenience. I hear it slides to one side at the most alarming angle. And I mean, to the uninitiated, can you imagine? <gasps> Body of Marsha! Well, Gerald said he'd fix it, but he was already halfway out the hall. Off to the pub. And Sylvia, and her heaving bosom. I didn't go with them. I wanted to get to the script, be word perfect for the audition. I decided I would leave nothing to chance. So, 
I discarded my glasses and I got myself some seriously uplifting underwear. <laughs> Davis had been at the audition, sat on the front row on an enormous pile of cushions and wrapped up like a woolly mammoth. But she was gone by the time I got on stage, as were most of the others. Anyway, I was standing there and Aubrey said, Ah, oh, it's um, Brenda, isn't it? Yes, that's right. He said, good heavens, darling, what have you done to yourself? You look as though you swallowed a couple of hard-boiled eggs. I said, well, I was hoping I might audition for the role of Desdemona. I'm word perfect. He looked confused, so I reminded him of the role I played in the Christmas production. Oh, that's right. The beanstalk, wasn't it? An inspired piece of casting, even if I do say so myself. You are marvellous, darling. Simply marvellous. Oh, so I can audition for Desdemona then. He laughed. <laughs> oh, darling, don't you think you're getting a teensy bit ahead of yourself? I mean, beanstalk to Desdemona would require an enormous leap of the imagination, don't you think? Why? Why, the lady's asking, why? And then he said, no offence, Angel. It's just that when one thinks of Desdemona, one is inclined to think of Sylvia Munro. Wouldn't one agree? One didn't. He said, perhaps something a little less ambitious. I don't think you're quite ready for such a challenging role now. Anyway, the pause that followed was so long, I thought he'd just forgotten about me. He paced up and down, tapping his chin, flicking his coat at every turn. And then he turned to me. <gasps> Would you consider playing the role of the handkerchief. The handkerchief? Yes, darling, you have read the play, haven't you? I said, yes, I told you, I'm word perfect. He wasn't listening. I don't know why I didn't consider it before. I mean, without the handkerchief, there'd hardly be a play at all. I said, so, okay, well, what would I have to do? Waft, darling, waft. That's what handkerchiefs did in those days. I said, but the handkerchief doesn't say anything. Oh, you just leave that to me, sweetie. I can see you now, trembling while a fellow rages. Trembling? I thought you said I should waft. <laughs> yes, but... One can hardly waft while it through rages now. I suppose not. Apparently, I was wafting when I should have been trembling, and I was trembling when I should have been wafting. In the end, 
the whole idea of the animated handkerchief was just quietly dropped. Oh, but Aubrey did graciously offer me the part of Sylvia's understudy. Seeing as you've worked so hard on her line, I'm not one to say I told you so, but I did suggest that we consult a professional. I told them, Gerald's an accountant, not a plumber. So on opening night, Desdemona, Sylvia, had the most unfortunate accident. As usual, no one ever listens to me.